All right, so when you're dealing with different types of th thermochemical equations, um, you're going to be dealing with different types of delta H's, our heats are, our enthalpy changes. Um, we're going to talk about the heat of formation, or the formation of a substance. So we're going to call that delta H with a subscript of F, saying we're forming something. Um, that little zero sign says we're forming something in its standard state. I'll talk about that in just a second. Okay, let's, let's read about what this means. This delta HF is a change in enthalpy that accompanies the formation of one mole of that compound or whatever substance we're dealing with, one mole, that's it, in their standard state from its elements in their standard state. So basically what we're talking about is we're forming something, we form it from its elements, and um, in their standard state means whatever state of matter they are in at 25 degrees Celsius. So that's a little little zero that thing says at the top. That means everything I, um, I'm promising you or I'm telling you that everything that I'm dealing with is in its standard state. So like for example, water at room temperature uh, is going to be a liquid. H2O at room temperature is a liquid, so I would make sure that the water was in liquid form. Okay, so we're dealing with elements because we're going from um, it's their elements to the substance. Uh, free elements in their standard states are assigned a uh, delta HF of zero kilojoules. So because we do not form them, we don't form elements, elements are just here on Earth, um, we are not going to give them a delta H value because we, they, don't act, they aren't formed from anything. But if we, from those two things, if they, from elements, if they get a substance and it requires energy, the delta H is going to be a positive number. It's going to be higher than this. If a delta H, if from its elements it releases energy, it's going to have a negative delta H, uh, or beneath this, or releasing energy. It's exothermic. So this is going to be our like arbitrary st standard or um, line where we decide if it's going to be exo or we decide what the delta H is going to be. So let's go over here and talk about what I'm dealing with. Or, all right. So we have three different. Um, I put up here three different um, heats of formation. So if we're dealing with, for example, hydrogen fluoride. Uh, to form it from its elements, hydrogen and fluorine, um, I'm gonna work, it's going to release seven, 273 kilojoules of heat. So notice also that I had fractional coefficients. In heats of formation reactions, that's totally okay um, because we want to make sure the most important thing is that we have one, um, one product or one mole of the product. So notice nothing in the product side has a coefficient in it. Uh, so that allows us to have fractional coefficients. And don't forget the elements in their standard state, so hydrogen gas, is a gas at 25 degrees Celsius, fluorine is a gas at 25 degrees Celsius, and they're also diatomics, meaning that they have they cannot stand alone. They must have two of them together and making molecules. And that's totally fine because that's actually true. Um, and then we have the formation of sulfur, sulfur hexafluoride, and um, it comes from their standard elements, and it releases 1,220 kilojoules of heat. And then um, we have the formation of hydrogen sulfide coming from its two elements. And, and actually, uh, it releases 21 kilojoules of heat. So why we need to know this? Like, what kind of information can we gain from these types of things? Well, we can actually have, uh, let's say we have a reaction, and we don't know how much energy is going to be released or gained from this reaction. And let's say that we've done, we haven't done this, and we're kind of worried about how much energy is going to be released, or we're worried you don't have enough energy for this reaction to occur. So we need to figure out the delta H before we actually do this in practice. So how do we do that? Well, we can employ Hess's law. Hess's law, don't forget, um, is when you add up and manipulate the different types of reactions, and then you can add up the delta H's to figure them out. So let's actually employ Hess's law um, in this to figure out what the delta H of this reaction is. So over here, we have hydrogen sulfide as a reactant. OK, so um, here's my hydrogen sulfide. It's a product, so I'm going to flip this to make it the reactant. So now I'm going to have H2S uh, gas yields sulfur solid plus H2 gas. And because I flipped it, that means I'm going to have to make this an endothermic reaction and it's 21 kilojoules. So my delta H is going to be 21, a positive 21 kilojoules. This is going to be, since it's not, since I flipped it, the sign's going to be flipped as well. Okay, um, so that helps me with that. Let's go over here to do HF. If we, I can find HF here. It's a product, so I'm going to, I don't have to flip it. But this does have a 2 uh, coefficient, so I'm going to multiply this whole thing by 2 to make this have a 2 coefficient as well. So I'm going to say, OK, 1 half times 2 is 1, so it's H2, and that's a gas, plus 1 half times 2 is 1. Fluorine, 2 is a gas, um, and that's going to yield 2 HFs. And that's going to mean I'm going to multiply this by 2, because this is telling me how much it is for 1 to be formed, but how I need to know how much 2 moles is going to be. So my HS, HF is going to be multiplied by 2. So negative 273 times 2 is going to give me negative 546. 
Okay. Um, then let's go to SF6. SF6 is a product. Here it's a product too, so I can just use the same equation and go down. So I have sulfur, solid, plus three fluorine gases, yields sulfur hexafluoride. And since I'm not manipulating this equation in any way, I can just say my delta H is the same, negative 12, 20 kilojoules. Okay. Then everything, when I add them up, should equal this equation in blue. So I want to make sure I get rid of my uh, intermediates. And so in this case, it's my hydrogen um, over here, and my hydrogen over here can be crossed out, because one's a product, one's a reactant. Um, I have my, what else can I cross out? Um, my sulfur is a product here, my sulfur is a product here. That can be crossed out. And I think that's pretty much it. So I'm going to write my final reaction, H2S gas plus 3 plus 1 is 4 fluorine gases yields 2HF, and that should be a gas, I should put gas there, um, plus SF6, and that's a gas. And then I can add these up, 21 uh, minus 546 minus 1220 kilojoules is going to give me a total of 1745, negative 1745 kilojoules. So it's releasing 1,745 kilojoules when this reaction occurs according to this uh, manipulation in Hess's law. Okay, um, and we can do this every time, and this will work. So my delta H is this, and this will work, but um, there's an actual easier way to do this, and I'll prove that as well. So if we go over here, our easier way, our delta H of our reaction is equal to the sum of, and that symbol means sum of, the delta H of our products minus the sum of the delta H of the reactants. Okay, so let's prove that and make sure that's true. Okay, the delta H of the products, so go over here. My products are 2HF and SF6. So I have 2HF, so this, I'm going to have to multiply this by 2, which is 546, so negative 546 kilojoules plus I have SF6, and that's negative 1220 kilojoules. And then we're going to add all these together. Minus my delta H of the reactants. And my reactants, is a, one of them is an element, so I know that's zero, so I don't have to include that. And then um, H2S is here, so it's negative 21 kilojoules. Oops. So if I do negative uh, 546 plus a negative 1220 minus a negative 21 kilojoules, if you do this actually all out, it should be negative 1745 kilojoules, which is exactly what we got over here. So this might be a shortcut instead of having to use Hess's law. This might be a shortcut in being able to use the heat of formation um, when dealing with the uh, heat of the reaction, an overall reaction.